So you're about to take step one. This video is advice that I wish someone told me before embarking on this super long and dreaded journey, as well as me providing my eight week study plan at the end of this video. So I didn't have to make this video, but I remember being on this other side of what seemed to be a mountain of knowledge that he just had to be learned. Uh, I remember scrolling and scrolling through Reddit, trying to come up with the best study plan, the best resources, and just consolidating my thoughts. And yeah, I just want to provide it uh, with this video right here. For some reason, it kind of feels vulnerable sharing the little details of my journey, but I think it's important to have full transparency to kind of express how difficult this exam really was, which I severely underestimated. Uh, depending on what school you go to, they may prepare you really well if they use MBME questions or not so well if they decide to do only in-house exam questions. But I do want to uh, have a little disclaimer that uh, everyone learns differently, everyone le learns at a different pace, and this is what worked for me. So take it with a grain of salt, but I really think that uh, if you stick with this plan, you should be able to study efficiently and pass step one. All right, before we hop into the eight week plan, I just wanna give pieces of advice. The first one I have for you is take a diagnostic exam as soon as possible. It shows you a starting point of where you're at because everyone starts at a different spot depending on how their preclinical years went. It also gives you that little wake up call of, oh man, like this is gonna be a really tough exam. And the sooner you have that realization, uh, the better off you'll be. The past is always 2020, but it's very hard to uh, get this straight in the moment, but it, just don't compare yourself to others because we all start at different points, we all progress at different rates. And I remember uh, I was sitting down in the early, early days and I was almost criticized for not taking my diagnostic test yet and not studying because I started studying uh, relatively late compared to my peers. And it, it added this extra element of pressure that just was completely unnecessary. So don't compare yourself uh, with how others are progressing as well as their um, diagnostic test scores. Take your diagnostics every week, if not every 10 days. Uh, there's gonna be moments where you just don't feel prepared, but take a diagnostic, just sit down for uh, the, the four hours and just take the practice test because you need to know uh, where you are in terms of your studying. Start your world early. Uh, I started way too late and it just feels like a mountain of questions that you just have to eat away at, but just start with 10 a day, it doesn't take too long, but uh, the important thing is it teaches you the style of questions on step one, as well as gives you a little bit perspective on what is testable. So unpopular opinion, I think you should ditch Anki uh, eventually. Uh, put that in parentheses because uh, depending on how many cards you kept unsuspended throughout your preclinical years, uh, hopefully your Pathoma cards you know pretty well but the cards do get overwhelming and they build up over time and it definitely distracts you away from the more necessary materials, which include uh, UWorld um, and first aid. So eventually work yourself away from uh, using Anki. Granted, if there are concepts that you think are very high yield that you just can't get a grasp of, then for sure, go ahead and unsuspend those and practice those every day. But uh, I do want to warn you that the cards do get a little bit overwhelming and eventually I just stopped doing them. This is very cliche advice, but I just wish that a upperclassman told me this a little bit sooner, um, and that is to keep pushing, keep moving forward. Uh, it's gonna be very discouraging. Every, um, some weeks your diagnostic scores are gonna drop from what is expected, especially after you grind it so hard, and that can be very, very discouraging and uh, can cause you to um, freak out a little bit. So just keep moving forward, keep doing those questions, build up your endurance. Uh, yeah, like I said, do start with 10 questions, then move on to 20 questions a day, and then do 40 question blocks, and just keep building your endurance because on test day, it's gonna be very difficult and you're just gonna have to keep pushing and keeping that positive mentality. All right, my handwriting is trying to get a little bit sloppy. Uh, keep in mind the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. Basically, the earlier material that you learn, eventually over time, you will start to forget. I, stu I studied neurology and psychology first, and uh, I thought that I had a grasp of it, but then it came down to test time towards the end, and it just it left my mind. So uh, my advice to that is just to keep continuing to review the high yield notes uh, that are very holistic per system and uh, just keep in mind that you will start to forget things. So continuously review the older material. 
Another piece of cliche advice, but take breaks, come up with a hobby, something to take your mind off of school because you will be studying around eight to 12 hours per day and you just need to blow off steam. Uh, believe it or not, I watched a movie uh, nearly every night. I would come home, eat dinner, flick on the TV and uh, just watch a movie to take my mind off of things. So come up with ways to just take breaks because you will be studying um, a lot. I'm thinking, um, yeah, about, yeah, you'll be studying around 70 hours a week. So take care of yourself. So when I was first learning how to study, I would look up videos and there wasn't a clear consensus on how to do your URL questions. So my advice is to study by system. For example, I'll explain this later in the video, but start with cardiology. Do watch all the cardiology videos while also doing all the cardiology questions. Uh, towards the end, you'll want to start scrambling the questions up based off um, with, with all of the systems uh, because that is how step one is formatted. But uh, in terms of learning and doing content review, you definitely want to review by systems. So your brain's not skipping and jumping around uh, different parts of the body. At the end of the day, 70% uh, is the target score for these practice MBME exams. Uh, it may not seem a lot, but as you start taking a few of your earlier exams, you'll realize 70% is very difficult to attain. Just keep in mind that is what the target score is because that will give you a 95% probability of passing within, uh, within a week. So if you can crack 70%, you're in good shape for the exam. Just keep, keep going at it. Uh, your scores are going to drop sometimes, but eventually uh, you'll hit that 70%. So the day before the exam, do not study and make sure you relax and just get your mind in all the right places as well as getting your materials put together because you're about to go to war. Uh, you've been having battles every single day, every single week, and it's time to uh, go to war. So make sure you relax the day before. <laughs> So then test day comes, and that is seven blocks of 40 questions, 280 questions. Uh, you've been preparing this entire time. Uh, my advice is take each block at a, um, independently. Um, if you look at my, uh, my step one video, I felt like I screwed up the first block as well as the last block. You just cannot let uh, your performance on one block uh, just give you mind fog for the future blocks. So just keep pushing forward. It's going to be a super long day. I've never been so caffeinated in my life, uh, but yeah, it, it's going to be a long day and you'll feel great afterwards. All right. The moment you've been waiting for is my eight week study plan. If you look, it's actually 12 weeks, but uh, it overlapped heavily with my med, uh, med school curriculum. So uh, the dedicated period was actually about eight weeks. So first things first, pick a test date and then push it back one week. So uh, for me, my goal was to be ready by the week of March 20th. I ended up pushing my exam to uh, March 31st. Uh, that's because I wanted to be ready, but it also gives me that you know one week, 11 day cushion just in case I need a little bit of extra time because I really did not want to reschedule my exam further into the future uh, for three reasons. Uh, one, it costs extra money. Two, if you remember what I said about the forgetting curve, the longer you push the exam to the future, the more you'll forget. And then three, it definitely decreases your momentum. The resources that you'll need are the first aid, especially the high yield pages in the back, the Pathoma videos, Boards and Beyond, Sketchy Farm and Micro, UWorld, and Onking. All right, so this is my 12 week plan. I set it up based off uh, how I thought it would work best in my mind. Uh, some students decided to break theirs up uh, per day leading up to their exam, but I thought that was a little bit too tedious. So I broke mine up per week. As you can tell, one, week one, week two, week three, week four, um, all the way to week 12 and the final test day. So I wanted to be ready by March 20th, and then uh, my test day was uh, March 31st, uh, a little bit earlier than most of my peers, but I really wanted that vacation time <laughs> at the end. On the left-hand side right here, you can see the different resources. Uh, that I used. Um, these are the Boards and Beyond uh, videos by system. And then we also have ch Pathomas chapters one through six as well as MSK and Derm. And then we also have Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm. For biochemistry, I highly recommend Dirty Medicine. Uh, there's a, I think it's a 30 video playlist on YouTube and the way he explains things uh, just make perfect sense. He gets down to the bones of what you need to know for uh, for step, and he also gives you some really cool mnemonics that even uh, stick to me, stick with me to this day. So highly recommend. Uh, I also had the U World, and then there's an Anatomy Anki uh, PDF. Um, Anatomy's 
a surprisingly lower yield. For me, at least it just came back. So I wasn't too worried about that, but there is a PDF, which I may link in the link in the uh, description below um, that I thought was helpful just to skim through right before the exam. We also have the first aid book, which is like the Bible of USMLE step one, and as well as MBME exams. So I had six that were uh, handed down to me. <laughs> um, okay, so for week one, uh, I went through chapters, uh, this was just after New Year's. I went through Pathomas chapter one through three because I was told those were the highest yield, I guess, things to know before step. And I kind of wanted to inch my way into studying. Uh, I did all of those Anki cards for those as well as about uh, 20 Euro questions per day. So 140 per week. And then I uh, started off with the pathology general principles questions because I just wanted to ease my way in, but those ended up being a lot more difficult than I was expecting. <laughs> Uh, for week two, I went through chapter four through six. Um, also a uh, few more Euro questions. And then I also started some uh, sketchy farm anti-neoplastics. So the reason why there isn't much uh, studying yet is because this was also during my brain, mind, and behavior curriculum. So I was still on top of step studying. I was also studying for uh, neurology and psychology. Uh, so that was um, very, very difficult to manage. Um, so skip ahead, uh, week four, I decided to uh, jump into things. Cardiology was the biggest block of 13 hours worth of videos of Boards and Beyond. So I started with cardiology and I also did psych because I was about to be tested on psych. So might as well, you know, kill two birds with one stone. So before talking a little bit more about dedicated, uh, I kind of want to explain what the general rundown of my day was. So uh, essentially I went through about three to four hours of uh, lecture content review through whether it's Boards and Beyond, Sketchy, uh, I just watch the third party resources. Um, and then I would do the Anki cards associated with them, which ended up being a little bit too overwhelming. So I just ditched them towards the end. I wrote down that I read first aid. I really didn't. I would just skim through it as I was uh, going through each system just to make sure I'm covering all my bases. And the way first aid is laid out is just super helpful with the tables. That's how my brain uh, works and it's just good at covering all your bases. And then of course I did U World for about two hours each day. So finally dedicated hit, which basically meant that our full-time job was to study. Um, that was week six of the plan but uh, this is when I really started cracking down and getting really serious. So I took my first diagnostic test, which was by AMBOSS and oh, very nicely AMBOSS was free. So that's why I took it for my first one. And I got a 45%. I wish I took it so much earlier because um, that gave me a wake up call of, oh my gosh, this exam is very, very difficult. Um, I was talking to some of my peers also, which I shouldn't have compared scores, but they were getting in like the 60s, 70% already right off the bat. So I was uh, very, very nervous and stressed out, but I just, um, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to share my percentages on each, um, each MBME, but I did want to show full transparency because when I was talking to some of my friends, uh, telling them my scores and how I stalled and plateaued and went down uh, was really helpful for them. So I think uh, being fully transparent, I guess, um, could be helpful for you guys as well. So I started off at a 45%. That wasn't a good feeling, but it definitely kicked me into a different gear. So for week seven, I went through GI, pulmonary, uh, boards of beyond videos, watched Sketchy Farm for diabetes, Sketchy Farm GI, blood and inflammation, and then Farm Pulm. Uh, definitely love Sketchy Farm, probably one of the uh, best resources out there. I like to joke that if you do just Sketchy Farm, then you can get a 40% on these, uh, on these MBMEs. So Sketchy Farm, highly recommend. For my next MBME, I got uh, just below 60%. Also very, very stressed because I was not expecting to be uh, shooting that low, but um, I just, it was improvement from the last test. So I just kept on going. Um, but at the time I was still very stressed. So I grinded for another week. I uh, entered into endo repro, GI, um, and then I also started looking at the first aid rapid review, which is in the back of the first aid book. It's about 20 to 40 pages and it uh, gives you just the, um, basically the quick facts to know. And I got 60%. So as you can tell, I only improved by half a percent and that was probably the roughest week of, um, of studying for step because I grinded so hard, put so many hours and I got like basically the same score. So, 
Um, so a big takeaway from this is just keep working at it. You're gonna plateau, sometimes your scores are gonna dip, but you just gotta keep pushing. The following week, I uh, entered into um, biochemistry territory as well as immunology. I just, for immunology, I basically just read through uh, first aid, but for biochem, Highly rec recommend Dirty Medicine. I actually crammed all of biochemistry in two days, which is kind of insane because that was like all of first year of medical school. Uh, so Dirty Medicine really compressed it all down. And after that, my biochem scores went from very, very low to getting um, almost all of them right. So that was helpful. So after that, surprisingly, Dirty Medicine helped bring my score up to 69%. And I was not feeling great uh even though it was a huge improvement but remember that 70 percent was the target score and i was still not ready just want to remind you i wanted to be ready by march 20th and i was nowhere near ready i was just stressed my brain would not work for these exams uh so 69 percent it felt good i guess but i was still very very stressed and i wanted to um wanted to do better another point was i was nearly done with all my content review in terms of the systems so uh, at this point, I started to scramble my URL questions. I wasn't doing the URL questions per system. I was doing uh, pretty much everything. Following week, just kept grinding out, covered some genetics, immunology, lower yield subjects. Uh, I even wrote <laughs> work on weaker points. First aid, rapid review, and then I took the <laughs> U world self assessment and I got a 66%, and that was uh, terrible. I was searching on Reddit like, hey, what, what's everyone else doing on uh, the U world self assessments? And I want to say that uh, the UWSAs are a lot more difficult than the actual um, actual tests. So uh, don't don't worry too much about it, but I was freaking out and I said, okay, no, I think this is a fluke. So I decided to take another MBME and I got a 74.5% and that felt great because that was my first time cracking 70%. I knew that the U world self-assessment was a fluke. Um, I was still missing these biostats questions. So highly recommend Randy Neal biostats. I actually still watch his videos today for internal medicine, family medicine. Definitely check out his videos. He explains sensitivity, specificity, um, uh, negative particular value, positive particular value very, very well. And uh, the way he explains it, the formulas uh, will stick with you. And for the last two weeks, um, I did Pathomas chapter one through three. Uh, I ended up reviewing Psych Neuro again because remember I studied that first and I didn't remember any of it. So uh, I was starting to forget everything and forget all the medications. So I did Psych Neuro again. Uh, Endo Repro were one of my weaker points, so I recovered those as well. And uh, MBME has this cool thing called the Free 120. Uh, it's a website online that you can take, or what I highly recommend is going to the testing facility to take the test. And that was probably one of the most helpful things. You just schedule it 10, uh, 10 days before your exam, and you go in, you get to see your testing facility, and you kind of get the groove, uh, figure out where to sit, where to set the monitor. It just decreases a lot of stress on the day of the exam. So I highly recommend taking your uh, MBME 120 uh, at the testing facility. You do have to pay like around $75, but I, I think it's worth it. And I, I was saving money from all these other resources from my upperclassmen. So I thought this was definitely worth the investment and I highly recommend uh, y'all doing that as well. There were uh, some other documents, uh, which I'll link in the bio as well. There's the slide review document, as well as high yield images. Uh, I recommend looking at those after you take all the MBMEs because uh, all those images are taken from past MBMEs and you don't want to skew your scores. So on March 27th, I took my final MBME. I just wanted to take one more just in case to make sure my brain was uh, still working. None of the scores were a fluke and I shot a 78.5%, which felt uh, absolutely great. Uh, of course, there's still that element of uncertainty, but it, it felt good and it was kind of a testament of all the work um, and all the persistence because remember, I started at 45%. Some students take their first diagnostic and shoot 70% right off the bat, but uh, I was so focused on our in-house exams and trying to ace those that uh, I just put aside the, um, the board exam material a little bit too, too much, but it felt good. And uh, all of my hard work, I guess, looking back, it has paid off. These uh, facts come back to haunt you for uh, your other rotations uh, during clerkships when you take the shelf exams and uh, all this hard work is, 
is paying off right now. So I'm proud to say that I didn't have to push my exam back and I took it on March 31st as scheduled. I technically was ready to take it on the week of March 20th as I was working my way towards the free 120. But uh, that extra week that I buffered into my schedule plan, it definitely gave me that needed confidence going into the exam. So uh, yeah, highly recommend uh, scheduling your exam date a week after you're hoping to be ready to take the exam, if that makes sense. So exactly two weeks later on April 14th, I got my diagnostic back with a pass and that felt absolutely great. Uh, it was just a, it was a wild ride and I hope this was useful for y'all. So now you should be ready to take step one if this video was hopefully uh, useful. Uh, but before I send you guys away, I want to uh, give you three takeaway points. Uh, the first one is everything that you learn now and review is going to set the foundation for third year. So learn to learn because everything is going to come and haunt you uh, again, especially when the attendings start to pimp you uh, these step one questions. My second piece of advice is to ask for advice from older and successful medical students. What's interesting about step one is all doctors had to take this exam at some point. Uh, we all have our own experiences, so talk to them and get these bits and bits of pieces of advice and consolidate them to come up with your own plan. My third piece of advice is to have confidence. These questions are tricky for a reason and you're always gonna be second guessing yourself, but I want you to trust that you are equipped with the knowledge to answer these questions correctly. All right, with that, I leave you to it and I have no doubt you guys are gonna do great.